Hi, and welcome to my channel. This is the Practical Engineering Solutions channel, and my name is Jack. Uh, this is update number two on the model railroad control panel. Uh, if you remember update number one, I talked about why I needed to improve and update and uh, upgrade the control panel I had. The primary reason was <clears throat> that I had an increased number of uh, turnouts in, on the layout. I made a big yard, which you can uh, see in the previous videos I did. And uh, now it's well over 60 turnouts, and I just couldn't fit them on the existing control panels I did, and I didn't want to have another two or three control panels. So I decided to move everything over to JMRI uh, to do the controls of the turnouts. So in doing that, I had to come up with another control panel that was specifically tailored to what I needed under this new upgrade. Uh, I've done a lot of work, it's taken a lot of time, but I'd like to show you now uh, what I did, explain what I did, and then how I did it. And at the end of the video, if you stay until the end of the video, I have some uh, interesting uh, tips and hints and kinks that I found out about going along the road. It seems like every time I touch the layout, I find out something different and I learned something that I could do better or wasn't working exactly the way I thought it would. So stick around for the end of the video and I'd like to hear what your comments and suggestions are to those those issues. Okay, let's get started. Okay, this is the original control panel I uh, had and if you want to see how I made that just uh, go back and take a look at my original video and it talks about how I did that. Uh, there's a bunch of switches here and there's probably a dozen or so then I had uh, a control panel for the two yards. And the two yards I had, looked, uh, control panel, looked like this. Same thing, I had a PowerPoint, slide, laminated, and then put the switches and push buttons in there. So, in the last video, update number one, I talked about modifying the control panel to look like this. Now, this control panel uh, has several features. Uh, main power booster turnouts, which I explained, and a couple of meters down here to measure track uh, voltage. And also turning the odds and sidings on and off right here. And block power, which is basically power districts and push buttons to reset the power districts when they had shorted. Uh, and lights on there uh, to show what happened. So I looked at this and um, I had some problems. First of all, I started thinking, where's the fuse for this? There's no fuse at all for the main power uh, except back at the fuse panel um, in the house. So I said, you know, I really think I ought to have a fuse somewhere in here. Uh, the second thing I thought was these track voltage meters that I showed last time didn't really work that well, as somebody commented uh, on my uh, channel page. The reason they didn't work well is they were uh, bouncing around. The voltage bounced around, and it turns out that if you use a very good uh, voltmeter, the better the voltmeter you use, the more the, the voltage bounced around because it's DCC. When I used a real cheap multimeter from uh, Harbor Freight Tools, the voltage stayed pretty steady. So I decided not to use those two meters, and I found very few meters that actually would give me what I was looking for, uh, track voltage on both both sides. So I, I went with a more commercial unit that measures DCC voltage, track voltage, and amperage, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, the other thing, I, I had to move around some things because I, I put in here, um, you know, some of the lights, and I took up some space here with with the new meter. And so I had to move some of these things around. So what I came up with after this modification is this layout. <clears throat> now this layout was was what I was going with, um, and let me show you what what that does. There here, right here, is going to be the fuse. I moved the program switch over here, program off and main. Um, over here, this area here is where the new meter is going to be to measure DCC. 
uh, I re reworded some of these things to say block power faults. And then I was thinking, you know, I don't have a cutoff switch here. I'd have to go to the DCS-52 and find that little little button to turn off track power in case of a collision. Uh, these, these lights here and switches and push buttons clear a fault when it occurs at a particular uh, power district. But what if I see a collision happening? That's not really a, uh, a fault or a short. How do I shut off the power quickly? So I decided to put a cutoff button here, a shutoff button right here. Um, so I did that. I moved the couple of buttons down here to make room for the uh, switch, for the, for the meter, sorry. And let me show you what that looks like now after it got populated. Okay, this is the final version of the uh, control panel. And it's all populated with everything. Down here is the fuse. This uh, is where the program uh, switch is for the programming track. And again, this is the main power booster, turnouts, and so on. Um, this is the shutoff button or the panic button. And the way this works uh, is you push it and it stays pushed until you turn the dial clockwise. So you just have to tap it and it'll stay disconnected. It'll disconnect all the power until you twist the button. Uh, the rest of this is what I've, I've shown. Um, let's fire it up and um, I'll show you how it works. The only thing I don't have implemented is these few power buttons because I haven't brought the power up for these lights here. But everything else should work. Now that's the main power. If you heard the DCC um, DCS 52 came on. Uh, next we'll turn on the booster. See the lights dim there for a second. And uh, you can see the voltage here. Now, I can actually see it better on the camera than I can in person. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is put a Polaroid filter over it like that so you can see it even better. And shows the power and the current. Uh, this, this particular device is made by DCC Concept, Concepts. And it, it, it already paid for itself by um, showing me a problem I had that I didn't realize I even had. So then this is the turnouts, which just turns on the turnout power for the DCS-64. Let's try it. And you don't hear anything. Normally, I would hear turnouts flipping all over the place. Uh, but because I sequenced it and, and waited for the DCS to have some time to settle out, it worked. This turns on the RPI. The uh, JMRI is running on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the lighting. And that works. You can see I have over here a, uh, have a bunch of lights turning on. Um, so all of that works now. And I wanted to show you Another, th another feature of this, which is probably why it took me so much time. Let me see if I can tilt this around and show you. Every one of these, well, let me talk to it first. Every one of these sections here and this section here in blue, they're all connected to the, to the parts of the layout that they need to go to using, um, using connectors. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. There's a bunch of connectors in there, but it allows you to disconnect the entire uh, front panel, control panel. Okay, one other thing I wanted to show is the, uh, how easy it is to determine faults now without crawling under the bench. Um, I'm going to put a quarter, use the quarter test here, and put a quarter on my loop one, power district one. And you can see right away that one is lit up. And I've got these wired. I'm using the uh, PSX series of, uh, of uh, circuit breakers. So now I'm going to take the quarter off and I have to reset it manually. And all I do is hold this down and the light goes out. I didn't go for the automatic reset. I didn't like that because uh, I wasn't sure how long it would take me to reset the fault and fix it. So um, that, that's, that's really easy. It's very convenient to do it from above the bench than underneath the bench or, or have the automatic uh, 
automatic reset, you know, flipping back and forth every two seconds on the PSX series. Okay, so here is the back of the control panel. It's a little messy, but every one of these connectors can be disconnected, and you can take the control panel uh, and just bring it to your bench and work on it. And I found that to be extremely helpful. Uh, trying to trying to manage an, a soldering iron in here and make changes uh, is a nightmare. So by doing this, I can take off every one of these connectors. The power connectors um, are heavy duty wire, 16 or 14 gauge wire, um, <coughs> using these Molex connectors. The, the signal connectors and the lighting is with these DB25 computer connectors right here. Um, again, Molex connectors are for the higher power. And then, uh, you know, the switches and the LEDs have lighter wiring. And uh, these switches here, these power switches, all go to a power distribution uh, unit that I built. And I'll show you that, too, in a little while. Okay, hopefully you can see that. This is the power distribution unit. And all the power goes into these uh, sections or uh, duplex outlets. And each duplex outlet is a different switch on the control panel. So I can plug in up to two uh, plugs or circuits into each one of those duplex out outlets and they're controlled by the six switches on the control panel. And that makes things a little bit more organized. So let's talk about the problems I had. First problem I had was with this unit here. Um, when testing out the control panel, I noticed that th this um, number 4141, the George Bush a locomotive from Broadway Limited, had was always stalling. It was going uh, maybe a couple of inches, then stop, then going a couple of inches and stopping again. So I was trying to figure out what was going on, and uh, looking at my track track voltage meter here now on the new control panel, I noticed that the track voltage was like uh, between 10.5 and 11.5 volts. So I started investigating that. So my first thought was I have a problem with the locomotive. And um, I actually sent it back to the manufacturer and he said that uh, you know there was some track pickup issues and they cleaned it and fixed it and brought it back and I got it back and it worked okay. It still didn't work great, but it worked okay. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. So I did some research, and um, as I said, the track voltage was between 10 and a half and 11 and a half volts. So after I did some uh, in investigation, uh, I found out some interesting things. I use a, a, a booster, a DB200 Plus, which is a booster without the uh, command station in it. It's an old booster. And what I found is that if you don't give it at least two uh, or three volts higher than the track voltage you need, it won't work too well. The uh, track voltage will be kind of low between 10.5 and, and 11.5 and volts. It just barely makes 12 sometimes. So I think what the problem was, this particular decoder in this locomotive didn't like the lower voltage of 10 and a half, 11 volts. So what I did was I powered it with uh, an AC transformer. This particular model, the DB200 Plus, will accept either AC or DC. The newer ones like the DC uh, DB210 boosters or the DC240, uh, DCS240s which have the command station in them, they only take DC. So why did I want to use AC? Well, I had some switching power supplies that I used on other projects in the past and they create a lot of noise. So to eliminate any possibility of noise issues uh, with the layout, I decided to use an old transformer I had that was rated at 16 volts AC at 10 amps. I put that in, uh, then the voltage went way up to 15 volts DC on the track. I adjusted the pot in the DB200 Plus, uh, and by the way, that little trim pot is very, very small, and I, you think initially it's a, uh, a Phillips-type 
uh, screwdriver that's required, but it's not. It's a slot. It's a cross slot like this. So I put the uh, uh, straight screwdriver in there, a real small one, and I was able to adjust it to 12 and a half volts. And when I did that, the locomotive uh, seemed to work fine. Everything worked a lot better. So by using the AC, again, to eliminate the, any noise that could be from a switching power supply, uh, I could do that with the DB200+. plus. You can't do that with the later models. So that's what I found out about that. Um, the other thing uh, I mentioned in, in uh, passing is the DS64, uh, the DS64 quad stationary decoders. They need a delay time between the time the command station comes up and you turn on the power to the decoders. And if you don't do that, there'll be random switching all over the layout. Now, the DS74 don't have that problem, but they have other issues that I alluded to in my other video, if you look on there, about uh, my beef with, I think the video is called My Beef with Digitrax. So anyway, uh, those are some of the issues I found uh, on the layout. Everything seems to be working okay right now. Um, I'm happy with the, com the control panel. Uh, I have uh, much more flexibility than I did before, and I'm using JMRI for, uh, for turnout control, as I mentioned. So please subscribe to this video and hit like if you liked it. Any comments or suggestions you have down below as what you think the uh, optimum track voltage ought to be. Uh, I think the MRI standard, uh, the uh, NM, M, NMRA standard is between 12 and 12 and a half volts for N scale. Um, I'm on the high side of that, but I think I'm okay with it. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you down the road on my next video.